see the smartboard, can't you? Yeah. 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 Okay. Jeez. All right. So, all right. So, guys. Um. First of all, guys, let's uh, let's work our unit circle review. All right. What you have are certain dollar values for each one of these ratios. You have a twenty dollar. You have a fifty dollar. You have a one hundred dollar. And yes, Giovanni, you have a five hundred dollar question. All right. So let's get started here. We are working our unit, 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 circle, circle, circle. All right. All of these now are going to be in the context of uh, things that you're going to have to do come uh, AP calculus exam time. Right? You're going to be looking with working with tangent, secant squared, cosecant squared, secant tangent, all of which are derivatives of trig functions, right? So these are very likely ones that you're going to see. Alright? No. Oh, this is new? Alright. Well, it's 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 not new, but Again, think about what your rules are, guys. If your denominator is a 3 or a 6, what do you know? Something gets cut in half. half, in half right? If your denominator is a 4, what do you Make know? A square. You're drawing a square. In other words, sine and cosine are equal to each other, correct? Yes. And if, you're, if your denominator is a 1 or a 2, it means you're ending up on the axis, right? Which means you're getting zeros and ones. Sure, that's good. All right, so so let's try this, guys. We'll give you a few minutes here. You go down, so this is the go over. Okay, so there's... So, all right. So let's take the first two questions, one of which was worth $20, one of which is with, worth 50 And the first thing I want to do is I, I need to figure out where 5 pi over 6 is, correct? So stop me when I get there. Stop, right? Okay. So in other words, what I'm get, what, what I'm going to be getting my algebra two guys to do is to start counting this out. One pi over six, two, three, four, five pi over six. Now, what do I know if the denominator is six? Something's, Something's getting cut in half, right? And the, what's getting cut in half is this axis right here. Well, remember, it's x is the cosine and y is the sine. Dylan, it's not west coast, it's x coast, right? Miss Pete, are you old enough to remember a group called X Clan? Yes. Yes, I used to say, oh, thank you, Miss Pete. I used to say it's not X Clan, it's X coast, and everybody got it, right? Okay. We did. So now I can always go back to Miss Pete with that joke, I know. All right. All right. So that, you're my go to person. All right, so now. What do I know? Which axis is this? This is the, the y-axis, right? So, then, so what do I have? I have the sine of 5 pi over 6 is what, Jada Rogers? You just said it. Oh, one. One half, right? Okay. Which oh. means that the cosine of 5 pi over 6 is going to be what? Negative so 3 over 2, but it's going to be negative, negative correct? So negative square root of 3 over 2. And all I have to do now is take the 1 and divide by the what? The sine So it's going to be 1 half divided by negative square root of 3 over 2. Algebraically, what's going to happen with my 2s? They're going to cancel, right? So I'm going to get negative 1 over the square root of 3. How many $20 winners do we have? We should have everybody, right? We got $20. Okay, so... Again, guys, this is what gives me the feedback I need. We, we're going to be doing this again. All right? All right, let's try the second one. And again, my denominator is a 3, which means that something is getting cut in half. In half right? And which, what's getting cut in half now? So the cosine, the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. 
which means that the sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. Now, even though, even though I may not need them, I always like to have my sines and cosines ready. All right? So now, how do I turn this into a secant square? I, I have to take this and do what? Flip it, magnip it, and square it, right? Now, does it matter in which order I do those? No. no. All right, which one am I flipping and squaring? The cosine. The cosine, right? Okay. So the cosine is one half. One half, if I flip it, becomes two. And two, if I square it, becomes four. Four. There we go. So secant squared of pi over four, pi over three is four. All right. Should we do one more? Yes. Let's do one more. All right. Over two. Or, guys, remember now, square root of two over two is really one over the square root, square root of two. Where is this going to come in handy? Because at some point, you're going to have to do what to this? You're going to have to flip it. And that's where you're going to need to know this. All right? So I'm going to write this as 1 over square root of 2. All right? Now, what do I have to do here? I have to do what two things? you got to flip it. i got to flip it and square it. And square it. Does it matter which one? No. All right. Um, and actually, it's not going to matter which one of these, because they're equal anyway, right? But cosecant is 1 over the sine. All right? So I'm going to be working with this. I'm going to take this. Aubrey, flip that for me. What do I get? Negative square root of 2. That's, that's the flip. Now, what are we going to do next, Kayla? I'm going to square it. Square it, right? Now, it's negative, Dylan, but if I square it, I'm going to get a what? Positive. So what do I get, what do I get if I square this? I think one of the successes is that we're able to uh, bring this class into this school. Um, some of these students have had Algebra 2, some of them haven't, which is, I mean, this is, you're really putting and asking a lot of these students to take AP Calculus right out of Honors Geometry. So I've, I've had to do a lot of Algebra 2 content with them, I've had to do, but it's one of the great successes because these these students, they understand. They, they're going to get it, and they're going to, they're going to do well on this test. Another great success is to, to be able to work with the wonderful students that we have at MSL, at Milwaukee School of Languages. They are, it's a fantastic group. Uh, these, our groups get along. When I run a Saturday session, these, these kids work together. They know each other. They've become friends in, in some ways, and that's been a great success. The greatest challenge, and, and it's, it's a challenge that I don't th feel that I've quite yet mastered, is this idea of finding out what they know on the other side. This idea of a quick formative assessment to help me guide my teaching. Um, I'm not able to, on the other side, I can't walk through the, the camera and go to them and, and sit down and answer their questions face to face. I can't take a look at their work. Uh, so I really, use a lot of different techniques. I, where are you from one to 10? You, you saw that. Um, what specific questions do you have? It, it's one of those things that as I get better at this, I'll be able to master that more. Uh, I can do that here because I can see where, they're, where they are. And I've had these students you know, two years before, but those students, they're, sometimes they're hard to gauge. And with the, with the rigor level of this material, students don't always get it right away. And it's, it's, it's tough sometimes to figure that out. One of the things is find other ways to interact with your students other than the classroom. I use Google Classroom and I, I post videos. I, 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 I interact with students through that, but find some other medium. Um, the fact that we have these Saturday sessions through the Breakfast Club is really important because now I can I can physically work with them. They can see who see our class and, and their class together, uh, and then this idea of formative assessment. You know, find some way to do that. That's 
uh, and, and maybe even have use Google Classroom to have students submit things online. But always be aware of where your students are in terms of how they're mastering the material. My name is Giovanni Hanstead, and I'm in the AP Cal. And my name is Billy Blight, senior, and I'm in microeconomics, AP Cal. AP Cal. <laughs> and same through with microeconomics also. It's like, I don't know, it goes hand in hand with math and just that sort of academic field and being able to actually take it while because our school doesn't officially serve it. So it's nice being able to take it and everything. It opens us up to like a new teacher. And a new environment into uh, new students. Like in our telepresence class, we actually have an eighth grader who's in our AP Calc. So you know that's kind of extraordinary. <laughs> and I just think it's uh, it's been a great experience, you know, to, um, to actually have this class because last year we were uh, we were having like a, a discussion whether there's going to be AP Calc, and that would have sucked. Like, what would I do? I would have a math class. So it's been a great experience. It's kind of hard because you don't have that one-on-one -on -one connection with him, like with the other class has. Do you ever have the opportunity to see him in person? Uh, we have Saturday sessions that we, uh, I go to or some of the classmates go to when we see him there. And then like a different problem for me because I'm so used to an actual physical copy of homework and it's all in a classroom and I'll just completely forget. If I ever take like an online course at like college, it would help me out a lot because I could I kind of have the feeling like, oh, really, I have that one-on-one -on -one connection with the teacher. So I think it's, uh, it's going to help me better prepare for an online class in college. I think it just allows you to be more open in a classroom. Like last year, not last year, last semester, I had a physics course at UWM. There was like probably close to, to like 150 students there. And when you have that many people in a classroom, it gets hard to like want to raise your hand and interrupt and everything. But because you kind of have to do it with these classes, you're more willing to, I guess, be more outspoken in a bigger environment, which is kind of what a lot of colleges are. So it's a good experience in that way. It's not really that hard, you know, you just have to be dedicated to the subject, you have to like it. Like, we have linguistics, and that's the study of language. Or, and you have to be just really dedicated, like I have to be calc, and I, I love math, so that's why I chose it. You have to be really dedicated to the subject, and um, also to go to the Saturday sessions, they help out a lot. You know, it's uh, three hours, and you actually have one-on-one -on -one with the teacher, and you get to meet the other classmates from other schools. So that's really good. You have to, like, be willing to be outspoken, and again, you have to be interested in the course. Since so much reliance is placed on you, since it is usually like an AP course or some type of, like, college course is modified for you, you just need to actually be interested in it. Mm -hmm. Like if you're overburdened by other stuff or you're just not generally interested, you're not going to study, grades are going to fail, and there's no reason for you to really partake in it at that point. Mm -hmm. And if you're not willing to like speak up in class, when there's like plenty of other students and the teachers doing this thing, you're not going to be able to get help on whatever you're trying to find out. On a scale of 1 to 10, Sam, where are you? Like a 7. A 7. Teresa, where are you? Dylan, where are you? 6.5. 6.5, and that's only after one day, right? Kayla, where are you? 6. 6, okay. All right, so that means with, with another couple of days on this, I think we should be fine. Guys, I'm proud of you. You did a great job today. Thank you. All right.